You can't feel anything. You're one with the music. Time stops, you have intense concentration. And this is indeed the characteristic of what we think of as the good life. Today you will learn from Martin Seligman how to build the good life, or better said, your good life. You might have heard about positive psychology. It has been described in many ways and with many words, but the commonly accepted definition is Positive psychology is the scientific study of what makes life most worth living. Peterson, 2008 To push this brief description a bit further, positive psychology is a scientific approach to studying human thoughts, feelings and behavior with a focus on strengths instead of weaknesses. Building the good life instead of repairing the bad and taking the lives of average people up to great, instead of focusing solely on moving those who are struggling up to normal. As a field, positive psychology spends most of its time thinking about topics like character strengths, optimism, life satisfaction, self-compassion, hope, and elevation. These topics are studied in order to learn how to help you flourish and live the best life you can. If you are not familiar with the field of positive psychology, the name might seem like it's referring to something along the lines of positive thinking. However, while optimism is certainly relevant to positive psychology, it's simply one concept of many under the broad umbrella of positive psychology. Seligman identifies three types of happy lives in his theory. I believe there are three different, and I call them different because different interventions build them. It's possible to have one rather than the other. Three different happy lives. The first happy life is the pleasant life. This is a, a life in which you have as much positive emotion as you possibly can and the skills to amplify it. The second is a life of engagement, a life in your work, your parenting, your love, your leisure. Time stops for you. That's what Aristotle was talking about. And third, the meaningful life and what we know about them. The first life is the pleasant life. And it's simply as best we, we can find it, it's having as many of the pleasures as you can, as much positive emotion as you can, and learning the skills, savoring mindfulness, that amplify them, that stretch them over time and space. But the pleasant life has three drawbacks, and it's why positive psychology is not happyology, and why it doesn't end here. The first drawback is that it turns out the pleasant life, your experience of positive emotion, is heritable, about 50% heritable, and in fact, not very modifiable. Second is that the positive emotion uh, habituates. It habituates rapidly, indeed. It's all like French vanilla ice cream. The first taste is 100%. By the time you're down to the sixth taste, it's gone. And this leads to the second life. I have to tell you about my friend Len to uh, talk about why positive psychology is more than positive emotion, more than building pleasure. In two of the three great arenas of life, by the time Len was 30, Len was enormously successful. The first arena was work. By the time he was 20, he's an options trader. By the time he was 25, he was a multimillionaire and they have an options trading company. Uh, second, in play, he's a national champion bridge player. But in the third great arena of life, love, Len is an abysmal failure. And the reason he was, was that Len is a cold fish. Len is an introvert. Uh, Len was wealthy enough to be able to afford a Park Avenue psychoanalyst who for five years tried to find the sexual trauma that had somehow locked positive emotion inside of him. But it turned out there wasn't any sexual trauma. It turned out that Len grew up in Long Island and he played football and played bridge. Len is in the bottom 5% of what we call positive affectivity. So the question is, is Len unhappy? And I want to say not. Contrary to what psychology told us about the bottom 50% of the human race in positive affectivity, I think Len is one of the happiest people I know. He's not consigned to the hell of unhappiness. And that's because Len, like most of you, is enormously capable of flow. When he walks onto the floor of the American Exchange at 9.30 in the morning, time stops for him. And it stops till the closing bell. When the first card is played, till 10 days later, the tournament is over, time stops for Len. You can't feel anything. You're one with the music. Time stops. You have intense concentration. And this is indeed the characteristic of what we think of as the good life. 
And we think there's a, a recipe for it, and it's knowing what your highest strengths are. And again, there's a valid test of what your five highest strengths are, and then recrafting your life to use them as much as you possibly can. Recrafting your work, your love, your play, your friendship, your parenting. So that's the second path. The first path, positive emotion. The second path is eudaimonia and flow. And the third path is meaning. This is the most venerable of all the happinesses traditionally. And meaning in this view consists of very parallel to eudaimonia. It consists of knowing what your highest strengths are and using them to belong to and in the service of something larger than you are. If you get value out of our content, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. While these lives may all result in different types of well-being, Seligman's research indicates that the meaningful life is the strongest contributor to overall life satisfaction. Seligman also theorizes five pillars of well-being in what he calls the PERMA model. P for positive emotion, E for engagement, R for relationships, M for meaning, and A for accomplishment. Seligman asserts that each of the mentioned components is intrinsically motivating and contributes to well-being. P. Positive emotion. Positive emotion is much more than mere happiness. Positive emotions include hope, interest, joy, love, compassion and gratitude. Positive emotions are a prime indicator of flourishing and they can be cultivated or learned to improve well-being. Positive emotions can undo the harmful effects of negative emotions and promote resilience. Ways to build positive emotion include spending time with people you care about, doing activities that you enjoy, hobbies for example, reflecting on things you are grateful for and what is going well in your life. E. Engagement. Engagement, according to Seligman, is being one with the music. It corresponds to the concept of flow, the loss of self-awareness and total absorption. Tasks are examples of flow. To put it another way, it's being fully present in the moment and concentrating solely on the work at hand. When the proper balance of difficulty and skill is found, flow, or this concept of engagement, occurs. When people apply their top character qualities, they are more likely to feel flow. The concept of engagement is far more powerful than just being happy. But happiness is one of the many byproducts of engagement. Ways to increase engagement. Engagement in activities that you really enjoy and where you lose track of time while you do them. Practice being present in the moment, especially when doing monotonous tasks. Spend time in nature, paying attention to, listening to, and observing what is going on around you. Positive relationships. Relationships are characterized by individual interactions with partners, friends, family members, and in general with other people. In the PERMA model, relationships are defined as feelings of being supported, loved, and valued by others. Relationships are incorporated in the model since people are social creatures by nature. Many people want to improve their connections with those closest to them, genuinely responding to others, especially in close or intimate relationships, improves connection, wellness, and happiness. How to build relationships. To learn more about people you don't know well, ask them questions. Develop new friendships with people you already know. Reach out to people you haven't seen or spoken with in a long time. M. Meaning. The need for purpose and the need for a sense of value and worth are two more essential human characteristics. Seligman defined meaning as a sense of belonging to something larger than oneself. The event of major hardship or adversity, having a purpose in life helps people focus on what matters most. Everyone's definition of meaning or purpose in life is different. A job, a social or political cause, 
a creative effort, or a religious or spiritual belief can all be used to find meaning. Ways to build meaning. Get involved in a cause or organization that matters to you. Think about how you can use your passions to help others. Spend quality time with people you care about. A. Accomplishments. Achievements, mastery, and competence are all terms used in PERMA to describe achievement. Working for and achieving goals, mastering an endeavor, and having self-motivation to do what you set out to do all contribute to a sense of accomplishment. This contributes to happiness as people may look back on their lives with pride. Extrinsic goals, such as growth and connection, lead to greater increases in happiness than external ones such as money or a celebrity status. Ways to build accomplishment. Set goals that are smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Reflect on past successes. Look for creative ways to celebrate your achievements. So what are the benefits of positive psychology? Positive psychology's greatest potential value is that it teaches you the importance of being able to change your perspective. Because a relatively little modification in your perspective can lead to remarkable shifts in well-being and quality of life. This is the subject of many approaches, exercises and even entire programs based on positive psychology. Adding a little extra optimism and thankfulness to your life is a simple step that can drastically improve your outlook.